2021 Hyundai Venue, the denim trim level. So let's get started with this review. And the first topic will be the exterior. This is a subcompact little SUV, okay, entry level type vehicle, okay, starts at around $18,000. As you see it here, it's about $23,000. And this denim trim is definitely what I recommend. This vehicle doesn't scream delinquent or juvenile or anything like that, right? This actually has a nice, neat, cute look to it that I really appreciate. If you're one of those people where you're just tired of the used car market, right? You're tired of these ridiculous prices. You just want a nice, decent, economical vehicle to get you from point A to point B while actually providing you with a pretty rewarding driving experience. Well, I think vehicles like this is definitely where you need to be looking at. Okay, so let's kind of transition over into this drive now and some of these specs. In this world of insanely priced, <laughs> ridiculous demand vehicles like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. It is refreshing to see that Hyundai is still making a vehicle that's well under twenty five thousand dollars that still gives you a proper driving experience. At no point when I had this vehicle did it feel like some death trap tin can toy of a vehicle to drive. Okay, this actually has a nice sure footed feel to its driving demeanor as I'm about to demonstrate when I get on the highway. But let's talk about the engine here. 1.6 liter, four cylinder engine, no turbos here. And this thing produces 121 horsepower and about 113 pounds feet of torque. You know what, for city driving, well, that's always fun. Just foot to the floor everywhere you go, making a racket, right? <laughs> and you're not even really breaking the speed limit. So, but you know, jokes aside though, aside from that little demonstration I just gave you, this thing for city driving is truly great. Okay, the way they have this petite engine kind of tuned alongside the CVT transmission, it's actually really rewarding to drive around the city. It always feels relatively peppy, right? And also this agility, this kind of playful nimbleness that this venue has, it again translates into some great driver confidence. This handles way better than you would think it does. It's got a strut base suspension up front and a torsion beam rear suspension. And you know what, at the highway speeds, this isn't terrible, okay? I had it at some higher speeds before and it really never felt like it was being blown around or anything like that. It always felt composed and even though I don't think the venue is at its element out of the highway, it's still nice to know that if you need to use the highway, well, it's decent for that. But this is mainly an urban commuter. That's where this thing really shines. And in fact, it's rather quiet at those city speeds as well. And I do like how it reacts though, even though it doesn't have a whole lot of power to offer, especially when you need some highway passing power, it still downshifts really well. So that's what I like here. And that's why I really like the CVT transmission. Not only is it smooth, but it also is very reactive. And I'm just driving around in the normal mode here. You have a sport mode and a snow mode to play with as well. But I just like to leave it in uh, the normal mode, but I do like to take the traction and the stability control off in these vehicles. That does help it to react a little bit better, I've noticed. But before I was trying to drive all crazy, I was trying to turn this thing, floor it into, into the turns right in sport mode, traction off and everything. And you know what? This thing never got unsettled, unbalanced. It never like tugged at the steering wheel or anything like that. Now, granted, it doesn't have a whole lot of power to work with, but the point is though, you can drive it crazy and try to make it lose its balance or what have you, but it never does. It always feels composed. So again, the city driving performance along with the agility and the handling dynamic is what makes this a winner for me. This vehicle also gets about 30 in the city and 33 in the highway. Of course, you're gonna be able to put regular fuel in here. Another thing, this vehicle has like a four star safety rating, something to note, I suppose. Hyundai Kia Genesis, they always do a pretty good job making safe vehicles for you, so there you go. And I have it on this very jittery road here. You got 17 inch wheels, 205 wide tires in all four corners, very skinny, Nexon tires and uh, you know what the tires are decent no problems there and the ride quality is also very good okay 
for a compact car, they did way more than they really had to. This is performing at a higher level than what any compact car really needs to be at. Okay, the, the base wheel size is 15 inches, and for 2021, there's no more kind of like hubcap wheels. The, even the 15 inch wheel will be an alloy. So if you wanna go with the base model or something like that, and you want the most supreme ride quality, well, that's something to consider there because it is a torsion beam rear suspension. If you want the best ride quality for like the rear, right, if you have rear passengers with you, like a baby, something like that, children, and you want the best ride quality, you might want to go with that 15 inch setup. But even with the 17 inch wheel setup, this is really well done. Of course, the steering and everything reacts great like in every other Hyundai Kia product. The brakes also does a great job coming to a stop while feeling progressive. So again, all the little things that add up to the driver confidence, as I already mentioned, is great, supreme, love it. And again, that's really about it, man. This is an enjoyable driving experience for the price. There's really nothing to complain, even beyond its price. This is just a really well executed vehicle that Hyundai should be extremely proud of. And if you're shopping for like either, you know, for a child or something as their first car off to college, something like that, it's a really solid machine. Now just keep in mind, you can't just uh, jump out in traffic and, you know what I'm saying, get in people's way. Okay, you really do have to time how you kind of merge into traffic and everything because you know, you know, there's definitely limitations with this vehicle. As, as great as it is to drive, uh, you have to keep in mind, this is not the most powerful vehicle on the planet. Yeah, you have to really be a little bit more cognizant, a little bit smarter about the way you, you drive in this vehicle. Let's go ahead with all those things established. Let's transition over into the interior segment now. Okay, so now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior and some of the features that this vehicle is gonna come with. Now, this is obviously the denim model. Honestly, this is probably gonna be the nicest interior space that you're gonna find in the subcompact space. In fact, I think Hyundai won an award for this interior for the denim trim of the venue. So I'm not surprised by that. This is really well done. This kind of blue with the white contrast and you have like these cloth seats here with a little bit of that leather on the uh, on the sides here. So everything kind of has this unique character, textures, all these things, right? That's why I really recommend the denim trim. So not only are you getting a really well-priced vehicle, you're, you're actually getting a, a fun vehicle, both from the outside and the inside. It almost kind of reminds me of like a Mini Cooper. It kind of has that type of character to it, but um, with obviously the best 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty included good fit and finish of the materials and everything inside and uh, this little texture here in the seats i like that as well the base trim level okay i don't really see the point in that you can at least get an sel and you'll get blind spot monitoring with sel now even as standard you get like a few safety features like lane keep assist forward collision assist things like that but when you step up to the sel that's when you get blind spot as standards and there's a premium package that you can get with the SEL trim and that'll pretty much bring the price very close to this denim trim and at that point that's what I'm saying just get this denim anyway uh, now if you want to play with some different colors and all those other things then maybe getting the SEL with the premium package might make sense to you like that apple green color if you want to take advantage of that that's available on the uh, on the lesser trims here but the way you see it here you're going to be getting it in blue with the kind of white roof the white side mirrors and that same kind of theme continues on in here as well all the Hyundai venues are going to be coming with an 8 inch screen Apple CarPlay Android Auto, no problem. You're gonna be getting that, and this screen actually reacts very well, simple to use, no problem. So again, it's basically the same thing that I say about every Hyundai Kia uh, infotainment system. It's very simple, definitely one of my more favorite ones to use. And I like the way they implemented this kind of sort of within the dash. So again, it doesn't look stupid by having it you know, stick up on top of the dash. So really nice integration there. Climate control is easy to use. You got these kind of dials here to play with. You even have heated seats with this model and that's something that you get with the SEL with the premium package. But another thing, this denim trim does not come with a sunroof. If you got the SEL with the premium package, you will get a sunroof. So something to keep in mind there uh, if sunroofs are important to you. 
You only have one touch auto up and down windows for the driver's side window here, not for the other three windows, which is kind of unfortunate. But again, I do like how these switches, they don't feel stupid or overly plasticky, right? Even though it is, it, uh, it feels solid and sturdy in here. That's what I'm saying. You know, all the materials that you see in this vehicle, it's all hard touch plastics, but the way they have it piece together the fit and finish all of that is solid you know when you get in this vehicle you shut the door that's what i'm saying it doesn't feel like a tin can you also have automatic headlights which is a great thing to see very convenient and automatic high beams as well with the sel premium and the denim trim levels you're going to be getting a six speaker audio system okay with the base model the se you're going to be getting a four speaker audio system Yet again, another reason why I don't recommend getting the base model version of this vehicle. Make sure to get the six speaker audio system because this actually doesn't sound terrible. It's not like the best thing in the world, but this isn't bad for a subcompact SUV. Gone is the six speed manual transmission. They got rid of that for the 2021 model year. This would have been a pretty fun driving experience with the manual, but nobody buys it. So they got rid of it. And you only have the CVT, which is fine in my opinion. I really love Hyundai Kia's IVT CVT transmission reacts great. I've always said this, if you're afraid of CVTs, don't be. This is one of the best, most well-executed CVTs you're, you're gonna be finding in the market. In fact, almost all the CVTs now that's on offer with a lot of these manufacturers are truly great. So it's not like what it used to be 20 years ago. Yeah, very simple gauges here, and I'm averaging around 29 to 30 MPG, which is very similar to what Hyundai quotes, like 31 combined. Uh, I drive way more harder, so that's a very impressive fuel economy figure right there for me to be getting uh, with my with my lead foot, if you will. You got two USBs and a place to store your phone, and I have a Note 10 Plus Samsung, and it fits in there no problem. It's not a wireless charging pad, but at least it's a place to store your phone. You have another cutout there on top of the glove box to for some extra storage and that's the other thing i really like how kind of wide everything feels this kind of horizontal design cue that this car has going on it really makes it for a more airy feeling cabin space and i'm five foot eleven i have plenty of space to sit in this vehicle right uh seating position is great no real issues with uh with blind spots side view mirrors are great easy to drive easy to place on the road and it helps that it's such a small vehicle at 159 inches but Headroom is excellent in this vehicle and you have a six way adjustable manual seat. I kind of wish they offered electric seats at the top trim level here, at least for the driver's side, but they don't. Again, it's a combat car, what are you gonna do? Got two cup holders here in the center and usually with subcompact vehicles, uh, I notice they don't really give you a center armrest, but in this vehicle they do. And it's actually sliding as well, so very convenient. It's a small thing, but I appreciate having that. and. There's decent space in the center armrest as well. Now let's go ahead and let's transition over into the rear. So obviously being a smaller vehicle, this is one of the detriments. The rear seating space isn't plentiful or anything like that. Under six feet tall, that's pretty much the only people that can fit in the back seats. Any taller than that, you know, the leg room is gonna suffer. You're gonna have to watch out getting in and out of the vehicle. You might bump your head. Uh, but other than that, for people under six feet tall this is very easy to get in and out of uh, again the seat backs I wish they were kind of soft similar to what Mazda does then you could have kind of dug your your knees into the into the rear of the seats that could have gave you a couple inches more leg room but whatever they didn't do that there's plenty of foot room though so that's great underneath the seats and these seats are very comfortable mind you in the front and the rear they're not fatiguing they're really well bolstered and you can fold those seats 60 40 in the trunk again it's not the largest trunk space in the world. Don't expect that. It's a smaller vehicle, obviously. So it's decent and you fold the seats down. It's pretty much flat and there's plenty of space for you to work with. Then if you have all the seats down, you even have a spare tire in the back as well. So concluding thoughts, this is definitely something you should be putting on your short list. If you're in this market of a cheaper, more affordable vehicle, okay, either on a lease, finance, whatever, this is one to take advantage of. I've really enjoyed my time driving this vehicle. This is a really well executed example of a subcompact, an entry level vehicle that doesn't feel like total shit, okay? This is a really nice driving experience great little urban cruiser nice characteristics to it right from the exterior and the interior it's actually fun and playful and the driving experience is rewarding that's my look at the 2021 hyundai venue if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below but thank you very much for watching take care and goodbye